One of the most significant and powerful chapters in John's Gospel is the sixth chapter. In fact, we spend five weeks reflecting upon this sixth chapter of John's Gospel. Uh, during this time, it began last week with the multiplication of the loaves and fish, that tremendous sign of the abundance that God produced in order to feed the people. You know, in the Old Testament, they had looked forward to what they called the Messianic Banquet. And the Messianic Banquet was going to be a time of great abundance of food. And if you lived in a country in which there was often drought, often times in which there was famine and hunger, the idea of an abundance of food was a, a beautiful image of God's love and of God's care. And so Jesus there, he takes pity on the crowd and he has this multiplication of loaves and fish in order to feed all of those people. And in doing so, he begins to manifest that he is there to usher in the true messianic kingdom. With the messianic banquet, not to satisfy the stomach, but the messianic banquet that speaks to the heart that transforms the life. And that truly is what John 6 is about. And I'd encourage you over the next couple of weeks to read the entire chapter of John 6 because it is such a beautiful reflection upon the Eucharist where Jesus says that he is the one who is the bread of life. He is the one who truly brings the spiritual nourishment that we need. When we hear that term bread of life, we immediately begin to think about the Eucharist, the bread that it truly becomes the body of Christ. But in the early part of this sixth chapter, the bread is not the Eucharist. The bread is the Word of God. It's the wisdom of God. And so Jesus is saying, I am the wisdom of God. I am the truth of God that comes to transform your mind to transform your mind so that you may know truth, that you may know what your life is truly about, that it's not to search just for what satisfies the body, but more importantly, what truly speaks to the depth of the person, what transforms the soul. And so he says that Jesus is the bread of life. And this sixth chapter of John is a reflection really upon the Mass where first of all, Jesus comes to us as the bread of life in his word. The proclamation of the word is truly that bread of Christ's truth. And then Jesus goes on and he says, the bread that I will give is my flesh for the life of the world. He gives the Eucharist itself. The Eucharist, his own body and his blood, his very self. And he talks about how crucial it is that we allow his Eucharistic presence to transform our lives, to make us new people, to renew us in a new way, to bring about a new vitality, a new understanding, a new spirituality, a deeper relationship with the Father and the Son and the Spirit. That we are called through the Eucharist to truly recognize the presence of Christ who nourishes us, who makes us strong with his grace. This sixth chapter of John is one that, that is very challenging because Jesus, when he talked about the Eucharist, and he says, you know, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you shall not have life in you. That was repulsive to the people. And they said, how can he do this? And it was a hard saying, and many of the disciples left on that. They walked away from Jesus. And Jesus didn't run after them and say, oh, I'm just going to give you blessed bread and wine. No, he let them walk. And he turned to those who were still there and he said, are you going to leave too? It's that crucial. And Peter very simply and humbly says, Lord, where should we go? You have the words of eternal life. That ultimately the Eucharist is belief in the truth of Christ himself and in the power of his words 
that the Word become flesh, God Himself, can make Himself present to us in order to transform us. Every Eucharist is in a way an expression of the Messianic banquet of God's love for us, feeding us not with the manna as they had in the Old Testament as when they were in the desert, nor with the bread that was multiplied there on that mount, but rather truly the bread that transforms the heart and the mind, that makes us new people in Christ Jesus. That's the mystery that we are called to enter into. And it takes a great act of faith to enter into the mystery of the Eucharist. It is not simple. It's obvious even in the time of the early church, many people walked away. And that's one reason why John emphasizes this so much in his gospel, which was actually written about 60 years after the time of Jesus. But in that he was saying, it is so important to have a humble faith, a trust, in God's word, that the Jesus who became one for us, who died upon the cross for our salvation, can truly make himself present in the Eucharist that we share. How blessed we are to be able to share in the Messianic banquet in every time we experience Holy Communion. We experience that union with Christ. In the Messianic banquet of the Eucharist points to another fuller Messianic banquet, and that's the banquet of eternal life. That's the banquet of heaven. And Jesus promises that the one who eats my flesh and drinks my blood and lives in me will truly know eternal life. It is to enter more deeply into union with Christ Jesus. That is our call. That is the blessing that we have. That is our hope for eternal salvation.